Okay, so the UCAT is not the BMAT, and a lot of people get this sort of fine line confused when they come to section 1 of the BMAT. And the reason why is because, to be honest, it's very similar to the UCAT. Especially when, you know, some of it looks like little reasoning, or some of it looks like abstract reasoning, a lot of people come and think that they're the same thing, and that because they've just done their UCAT, or because they've been revising for the UCAT, they don't need to revise for section 1 of the BMAT, and that is just not right. Uh, the reason being is because the BMAT is vastly different to the UCAT, and often ups the level a little bit, and in reasons that may not be obvious to you guys. So today's video we're going to be talking exactly about why BMAT section 1 is actually really difficult and some tips and tricks that can help you get around these issues. Now if you don't know who I am, my name is Akshi, I am a second year Imperial College Medic and yeah that uh, pretty much sums up who I am. Uh, hopefully you do enjoy this video, we're going to be splitting this video up into two parts as we always do with timestamps down below, uh, they will be here on the screen. So if you want to go and check out the first part which is why the BMAT section 1 is so tough uh, and you know what makes it difficult, um, you can go and check that out directly or if you want to check out part 2 of the video which is going to be about tips and tricks that can help you navigate section 1, feel free to also check that out. So that will be also in the description down below. But yeah, hopefully you do enjoy the video regardless and uh, let's get straight into it. get this straight first of all, the BMAT and the UK obviously are very different and there are a variety of reasons. Now number one is obviously the delivery of the test. The BMAT is on paper, so surprisingly enough that makes it a little bit more difficult to do. Just because when it's online there's a psychological element to that. When it's virtual on a computer people sort of tend to analyse things better, people feel a little bit more awake up to it. With it being on paper it can seem a little bit more difficult to just do and you know you might think well, that's not really a tip actually, that's just more of you know sort of waffle, it's not real. You'll figure this out and you'll find that this actually starts being a thing when you start doing past papers that you start to struggle a little bit more with this and you start to find it more difficult to do more past papers of this and start to find it more difficult to actually get through questions and it's normal because you know with computers emitting sort of a blue light that triggers your brain to sort of send signals to itself to stay awake, to stay focused paper doesn't do that and with these kind of questions where it's sort of, sort of repetitive puzzles and problem solving and thinking it can get really difficult to keep doing them so it's important to sort of be aware of this and realize that this isn't perfectly normal another reason why it's difficult is because it's very long-winded uh, what you'll notice in the UK is that they will give you quite different questions, they'll change it up a little bit and it'll keep it sort of very different. But the BMAT can sort of just give you a massive power graph that spans two pages and ask you about four to five questions on it. And it can be really difficult to sort of identify the sort of small phrases or pieces of information that are important because in the UCAT it's never that long, it's always going to be a relatively short power graph. But the BMAT can give you really long, vastly complex and difficult power graphs that you require to extract information from. And that's why the BMAT requires a lot more sort of in-depth focus and complex revision to deal with. Now the final thing why this section is really difficult is because they have so many subsets of questions. Now they split this up into two general sections called problem solving and critical thinking. Now within that there are three subsections for problem solving and there are seven subsections for critical thinking. A BMAT guide is down below in the description which you can click on to find out more about this. However, briefly, it is very difficult and it's very complicated because they don't outline these sections clearly either. So for example for BMAT they will not say that this is a critical thinking question or they will not highlight which subsection of problem solving this question is under. And in the UK obviously they do that, they give you this section, but the BMAT is not like that at all. They throw everything at you and it could be literally any question coming at you. You've got to be able to pick up on these different types of questions and hopefully be able to analyse them from different points of view. Okay, cool, so let's get into some more tips and tricks and what you can do to navigate these difficult bits. Now, number one is to manage your time because like section two and like the UCAT, time management is yet again a really important thing. And I always like to say it because the BMAT and UCAT have similar timings. So section one and section two have similar timing. And the section two gives you just about over a minute per question. And section one gives you just under a minute per question. So it gives you 32 questions in 60 minutes. So you've got a little bit under a minute per question. So I always say to take less than that per question and stay rigorous to that so that it gives you a few minutes at the end to come back and do questions that you know you can do. So if, say there's a question that you know you can do but it's going to take you a little bit of time, skip that question 
and circle it, maybe keep a note of it somewhere, move on, get to the end, leave yourself some time and come back and do those questions. Just because there might be a question at the end that is really easy and something that you can really easily finish. And you just won't do it if you sort of spend time on questions that may be doable but require a little bit more time. And the next tip I would say is to make sure that you're splitting questions up in your head. So go through this guide because it's really helpful to be able to identify whether you're doing a critical thinking question or problem solving question and what type of question this is because actually if you know what type of question you're doing it can make analyzing and finding the answer a lot lot easier so like i said the bmat guide is down below for section one and if you just go through that they'll have a section or a few pages where they go through every single type of question and when you're practicing Make sure for the first few times you've got that guide next to you and you're going through the questions and thinking, okay, what type of question is this? This is a critical thinking question and it asks me about adding evidence to a conclusion, that type of question. Or this is a problem solving question and this is, you know, something to do with problem solving. Or this is a argument based question. Whatever it is, make sure you're highlighting what type of question this is. Because if you know what type of question this is, you know how to do the question because the BMAT will teach you, you know, if it's this type of question, you want to do this to get the answer. So it's really important for you guys not just going to this knowing these are sort of section one UCAT sort of problem solving thinking style questions but instead to get a rigorous idea of what a specific type of question this is and how to go about doing it. Now the final tip I'd say is for section one is to always do loads and loads and loads of questions of sections that you're not good at. So what I mean by this is section one like I said previous is split into two parts so problem solving and critical thinking and what's important is to target which area you're bad at because you won't be equally bad at everything you know you'll be bad at a particular type of question and it's really important to, that's why and that's why I say again it's really important to know the types of questions that they give you in the BMA because they do give you these types in the guide but in the actual exam they don't separate them so it's really important to know these types of questions go away practice a few papers and then come back and analyze which sections you're consistently performing badly at and which ones you're performing well at to do some targeted revision targeted practice targeted papers and you know that way you'll be able to attack those sections really well because you'll know i'm not good at this question i'm going to go away practice these questions in a lot of detail and then come back and do you know, the BMAT paper again. And that makes it a lot easier because it gives you a lot of control of the paper. Because the BMAT is a paper where they don't like to give you a lot of the information. They sort of like to throw you in there, like to throw you in the deep end, give you not much going on, just a set of questions, do these and you'll get a mark back. But you don't have to take the paper like that. You can easily just sort of revise well, come equipped with the knowledge of the different types of questions they're going to give you and be able to make more of a sense of the BMAT and be able to sort of split it up, maybe do particular questions first. And it just really puts you ahead of everyone else doing the exam. So yeah, that's everything. Those are some tips hopefully to manage your time and also to be able to target some practice with section one. Because the key thing here is to realize that BMAT is a lot more difficult than the UCAT. And a lot of people might say that, you know, that's not necessarily true, but in my opinion and from my personal experiences, I found the BMAT a lot more difficult than the UCAT. And the reason being is just because I went into the BMAT thinking that, you know, I could sort of not revise section one too much. It's sort of like the UCAT. And I didn't sort of look carefully at the types of questions. I wasn't prepared and I didn't look at these guys or sort of look at the subtypes of questions that come up I didn't sort of break down the paper into manageable terms because the BMAT is really easy to break down and sort of understand in your own terms or words and that's what's so key because this paper is really difficult but if you can just sort of do these basic things right like we talked about in this video you'll be able to find this paper really easily so hopefully you did enjoy the video uh, hopefully you do make use of the resources that I've shown down below in the description and uh, yeah, I hope that this sort of gives you a better and clearer idea. If you want to check out my video on the BMAT section 2, um, that is also available. So that'll be on the screen somewhere. Um, I talked again just like this about section 2, what makes it difficult and some tips. Also, if you guys want to see my full comprehensive guide to the BMAT where I talk about literally everything, I actually go into detail about these question subtypes in there. So if the BMAT guide doesn't make sense, I've made a video on the subtypes of questions. So that's also on the screen somewhere here and hopefully you'll be able to watch that and get more clarity surrounding it and yeah uh, hopefully you do enjoy the video hopefully you hit the red button and join our channel as well we are very close to 500 now we're about 400 i think now which is really cool but let's get to 500 next uh, that's a big milestone obviously and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy the video i will catch you in the next one guys all right see you in a bit